What's Gucci everyone? It's AJ here again and today I want to talk about PR quadries. Now PR quadries are kind of advanced data structure and they definitely depend on you knowing what recursion is and what at least a binary tree is to understand what is going on here. Now what a PR quadri is mainly for is to represent a map or a group of coordinates. And the reason because quadries came about and have a lot of power is a few reasons. The first reason is in a binary tree, to contrast, you need a specific ordering or else your binary tree could deteriorate to a linked list. If I have a binary tree and I insert things from maximum, from maximum to smallest, greatest to smallest, then it becomes a linked list and essentially it's not a binary tree now, it's not log in time to search. But in a quad tree, a PR quad tree, the PR standing for point region, you will see that no matter what order I do, the points, the tree always ends up the same. And that's the beauty of it. And what usually a PR quad tree looks like is there are a few rules with a PR quad tree. The first thing being that in a PR quad tree, only the leaves store data and the internal nodes store the information to get to that data. They store the quadrants, the four quadrants. That's why it's called a quadri because there are four ways to go at each internal node to get to the leaf nodes. And so again, PR quadri, it does not matter which way you insert as I'll show you and recursion happens a lot throughout the tree. So for instance here, I have an example. You can play with it here developed by University of Maryland. My PR quadri starts out empty as you can see here. It is defined in a XY plane or a 2D plane as you can see here, which is right here. And I'll be inserting things shortly. But the way I want you to imagine here is I said that the internal nodes only contain the information to get to the leaf nodes. The internal node contains four pointers that can go down the tree. And those pointers can be to other internal nodes for a deeper tree or just leaf nodes. And the internal nodes, this is an example of a, you know, a PR quad tree, which I'll be explaining more in depth of when things are inserted into internal nodes look like this. So they have certain ranges, the coordinates cover. So in this example, negative 128, negative 128 to the positive. So it's, you know, that's the horizontal. So the first coordinates, the bottom in a square, the bottom leftmost coordinate and the two to 128, 128 is the top rightmost coordinate. And then as you can see here with that square, I partitioned it into four sections, just four squares within that square uh, that is labeled as Northwest, Northeast, Southeast, and Southwest. And so this is an internal node. It points me within sections of that quadri to be able to get to the leaf nodes. So without further ado, let's do some insertion. So when I first insert something and my tree is empty, there, there's just going to be a leaf because my leaf is going to be able, my leaf node is the only tree. It's the only thing in the tree. I don't need to do create any internal nodes recursively as we'll see soon because it's the only thing it, and if I'm looking for it, I can just find it there. But if I insert something else over here, now I've done something. Now I've done something. So what I've done is every time you see a split or more lines being drawn, that is an indication of an internal node. And an internal node causes the splitting because that is a rule in the PR quadri is that you can't, I can't have, I must have every single leaf node or every single point of data defined in its own region. So here we go. So I have my internal node now and, Im and imagine if my whole grid space was negative 128 to this one, then I would have, you know, I would have South West pointing to a leaf node and I'd have North East pointing to a leaf node because that's where they go. So as you can see here, I fulfilled my rule that the still the leaf nodes are the only thing that contain data and my internal node. So now when I if I want to look for a certain node, I'll go to that internal node, which is the new root. And and based on the coordinates I'm looking at, go left, go, go to one of those two nodes or know that nothing is in either of these two nodes. So then let's try to put one here and put one here. And again, no internal nodes are created. It's just that now all the the whole internal nodes is full. But no matter what I do next, what, no matter where I insert next, I will create a new internal node because all regions are full. So I just did that and hey, I got a split there. So I created a new internal node 
And notice how even though, you know, these aren't perfectly, you know, they're not they're not perfectly away from each other, that I created a new internal node based off where my last internal node. So the means of the coordinate or the center of the coordinate was determined by the bounds of the whole plane, you know, whatever you established, and what the mean of the last of the last point. So the last point was the dead center, so now I'm gonna divide into four. So as you'll see here, as I keep adding points, that my I keep on dividing pretty symmetrically down the row. And notice, if you notice what happens here, something that's happening recursively is that since this region making is happening proportionate to the map, if I do two points close to each other, this is this is where the recursion comes in, I could have many, many internal nodes made in one insertion. For instance, if I do something like this, if I insert really close to this element, I had one, two, three, four. I made four, re oh, five, didn't count that one. I made five regions, five internal nodes based on that one, based on doing that one insertion because they were so close together to make all, I needed to make all those new internal regions to make sure that no two, that, you know, every leaf was on its own and that every leaf has its own region. So that is a PR quadri, but to end it all, the one of the best things for a PR quadri is region searches. So now that I have a region search, I can go down my internal nodes, and if the region they want, if the region I want to search is within those coordinates, I keep going down the tree. So I can recursively go down multiple parts of the tree, looking at the specific regions and see which nodes I get, and then return that information. You know, maybe I have I have location, but then if I'm taking maybe the measure of earthquakes and where they are, I can see, you know, the magnitude in certain data based on those objects. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll include this example in the link, and I hope you guys have a great day.